Good morning. Um, so some of you know that uh, over the past couple of years, there's been an effort towards modernizing the metadata methods uh, of uh, exchange within the IGS using uh, XML. And so this talk is about the progress that has been made, especially since the last uh, IGS workshop. So in outline, I'm going to start off with uh, giving some background on uh, the eGeodesy project and Geodesy ML, uh, the XML uh, schema for Geodesy, and on international standards for metadata. And then I'll describe what the Data Center's working group has been uh, working on in concept and plan for XML. And then our implementation progress and our, uh, as conclusions, um, our next steps. So uh, a need for eGeodesy. Uh, eGeodesy is a project of Australia and New Zealand government entities concerned with um, surveying and mapping to enable modern IT for geodesy. And what has been recognized was recognized by them and others is that the geodetic services have a, a wide community of uh, interest. There's need across many sectors for reliable positioning, navigation, and timing. And that in order to, to take care of these needs, uh, the geodetic data and metadata need to be um, discoverable, uh, interoperable, and authoritative. And there's just an increase in complexity of the data. And so we also need to keep up with that in the uh, data, data and metadata, making them machine readable. And they recognized that uh, an XML uh, extensible markup language method was necessary for our, uh, ge geodetic data and metadata. When you work with a standard, you uh, bring in the capability for discoverability, interoperability, and uh, authoritative metadata. And without that, you have a restriction on the usability of the information. Uh, it doesn't help with maintaining the accurate databases. If, if you do have standards, it can make that more efficient. It can make access and retrieval uh, reliable and that you can integrate them from multiple sources with your own uh, software and needs. Um, there are some standards available that help with the basic information retrieval and provide for some transfer of uh, limited geodetic metadata, but at the time that they were uh, working on uh, uh, the eGeodesy project and um, what came to be Geodesy ML, that wasn't available. The international standards that do provide some framework for this, uh, put forward by the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, includes uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium, OGC, with its uh, geography markup language, GML. And that uh, OGC standard includes uh, standards for transmission of the information over the internet, so web service standards. Uh, what we need to do in the geodetic community is to extend GML. So it has the primitive objects for geometry, for coordinate reference system time, but it doesn't have the details that are needed in geodesy for our, our techniques, GNSS, VLBI, et cetera. Um, it doesn't have the specifics of the equipment that we use. Um, so what is needed is what's called an application schema that extends GML, and that will meet the needs of a community like ours. So there already exist uh, extensions to GML called Sensor ML, GeoSci ML. So Geodesy ML is one of these extensions to <laughs> GML. And along with the extension, you get also the original uh, reference pieces of the GML standard. So the proposal was to create this Geodesy ML schema, uh, which would then make Geodesy me metadata discoverable and interoperable and easily transferable over the internet. Uh, and 
it would place it within these uh, internationally recognized data exchange methods. So the Australia and New Zealand groups uh, created a geodesy markup language, Geodesy ML, and so that describes our geodetic data and metadata uh, defined and transferred in XML format. And so it's currently a proposed application schema of the international standard uh, GML. So the way that it's been put together is to include the uh, necessary metadata for, for GNSS geodesy, including um, the related data and metadata, the um, observations, uh, reference frames, adjustments, measurements, site, quality, et cetera. It will take some future work to extend this uh, schema as it's been uh, put together so far for the other techniques, but that's entirely possible within this uh, uh, methodology of using Geodesy ML to extend it. It wants me to log in to UP7B. Wait, hold on, I think it might, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, so what is being done within the IGS and the data centers working group? Uh, we began discussions in 2014 about the need for a site log XML schema, and this was very independent of what was going on with uh, the Australians and New, Le New Zealand with Geodesy ML. We just uh, hadn't been made aware of it, but through the uh, teleconferences and mechanisms that were put in place for us to work towards this XML schema within the data centers working group, um, uh, we, we got uh, introduction to the Geodesy ML effort and recognized that it was the way to go to get our uh, metadata into the international standards structure. We had been talking about what was more a custom schema. We could have done it. You can do a lot with that, but it doesn't place it within that uh, international structure. So, so this was adopted in 2015 and within the IGS there are many institutions that are contributing to uh, making this work for us, and we're currently in the process of working with the Geodesy ML schema to enable what we want to have happen. So when we are fully built out for this, all the organizations involved with Geodesy that have data and metadata uh, to contribute or to consume can work through this GML, Geodesy ML, and the web services, web feature services system to access and exchange metadata. The data centers working group vision is shown here. At first, uh, we, what we want to make clear is that we want to maintain the best aspects of our current site log system. Uh, even though we would exchange metadata in XML, you will be able to get the metadata out in the format that you prefer if it's site log text version, if it's SINEX, we'll have the tools in place that you'll be able to do that and access the metadata. Uh, but meanwhile, it will allow us to have this machine-to-machine -machine interoperability within the IGS. One thing you can do with that is keep uh, separate databases in sync uh, more regularly, keep them more up-to-date with one another. And then, as we said, improve the discoverability of the IGS metadata, data, and products uh, outside of the IGS, so in a more international scheme. So uh, at uh, uh, Sydney, we had just adopted the Geodesy ML schema and our implementation was yet to begin. Since then, we've had uh, work going on at several organizations. Um, in particular, Geoscience Australia is doing the very heavy lifting they're providing the Geodesy ML schema uh, and all the documentation to support it, a number of tools to interact with to be able to access the uh, information that one needs to imp implement and use Geodesy ML. Uh, ROB, uh, Royal Observatory of Belgium, has been working with encoding site logs in Geodesy ML. And UNAVCO and BKG are investigating this mechanism of serving uh, OGC uh, metadata, including Geodesy ML as an application schema for the site log metadata through um, WFS. So what you can find at the Geoscience Australia 
um, site, they've got the geodesyml.org. It's currently a version 0.4 of the schema. Uh, that will evolve still. They have a, a GitHub code repository. You can access all kinds of documentation and code for supporting efforts with geodesyml. There's a forum where you can post questions and, and uh, discussion can occur. And there's a uh, user interface. It's the site log manager type of interface that is uh, live at Geoscience Australia for metadata uh, interaction. Uh, at Rob, they've been working on the metadata for their 1,400 stations and encoding that in Geodes CML. They started that when the schema was in the 0 0.3 version and they uh, made many recommendations for changes to the schema that were incorporated into the 0 0.4 version. And this uh, is going to be used within the European uh, area for the European Plate Observing System, which is uh, EPOS. Uh, and there's many, many GNSS stations and they need to be, have their metadata managed. UNAVCO again was working with the GeoServer. It's the reference implementation for Open Geospatial Consortium web feature services. So GeoServer presents WFS on the web, kind of the way Apache presents HTTP on the web. Uh, in order to implement it, you need to create the application schema mapping to Geodes CML. We were able to do this in just a matter of weeks uh, when an intern came and focused on it for that period of time, got some help from Geoscience Australia. And this works for machine-to-machine -machine accessing of metadata and allows indexing in, in <coughs> portals like the GeoPortal. Our next steps, uh, we're um, wanting to implement the uh, export of GIS EML uh, formatted metadata, site log metadata from the IGS Central Bureau Site Log Manager. We need some further refinements to the schema based on what the, we've experienced as we implement this. We need more open source codes that will generate the uh, information in other formats and building of the mechanisms for a machine to machine update it's, and registration externally. So I, the foundation is in place. Uh, there's a version of GIS EML available with a lot of support you can work with. Uh, we've had significant successes and uh, we need to work more to make the GIS EML easy to work with for both uh, data center working group and others and we'll continue this effort.